Hi hey everyone, welcome to today's episode where I will be showing you how to service your front shock absorbers on your motorcycle by changing the oil, the seals and the bushings. Uh, this job won't require any special tools or any special knowledge, just general mechanical skills and just be careful with everything and get around nice and clean. So let's get at it and let's see how it's done. Right, so the first thing I recommend to do before we even remove the forks from the bike is the top nut while it's clamped in the yoke. Loosen that just the slightest little bit because it'll be almost impossible once it's in your hand and trying to turn that. So once you've that done and removed the fork, next job is to pull out the top dust seal. Next job is to pull out a little clip in here that holds in the lower seal, the main seal. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera there, there's just a little loop in it. We're going to put a screwdriver or something in to pry it out. Slide it off, don't bend it out around it, just slide it off. That's the little clip that sits down into a little recess down in here. So once you've this top bolt loosened, carefully screw off the cap. Be careful because there's a little bit of spring tension in here. And just hold on it, don't just let it go. Keep a little bit of pressure down on it. And this is the part where it gets messy. This is where all your oil comes out, but I have the oil taken out of this one to keep it nice and clean. Just make it easier for funneling, but there's not too much pressure in this one. But there you see a little o-ring to keep the oil in there. This one being adjustable has a rod which goes right down to the bottom. This little washer is in the wrong side of this little spacer. That's even the lower side of the spacer. But anyway, take out the rod. As you can see it's got this little funny shape which grips a little adjuster down at the bottom of the tube which I'll show you in a moment. Next in this particular one which is off my Suzuki GSXF, there's a little 6mm Allen key bolt down here. We're going to loosen that and take it out and then this will allow the inner tube to come out. A little copper washer on it there to seal the oil coming out from the bottom. Okay, next carefully extend the tube, should be fully extended this time, but extends it out fully. Now to get them separated, it's a bit rough, but basically there is a little bush underneath this main seal and there's a bush on the bottom of this tube, which to get them out, the bush on the bottom of this one is going to be uh, given a hammer action and pulled against the other one to pull it out of the main outer tube. Just pretty much like this. And normally it doesn't quite in one go, but I've made things easier just to make it a little bit easier for filming. So we'll set this to one side. The inside, this is your little damper at the bottom which stops the shock from topping out full. There's a little spring in here I'll show you in a moment. Just lift off this little collar. Okay guys sorry about this my bit of video has been corrupted there but I'll explain what to do. Uh, the rod that I've just pulled the melamine cap off is just simply a matter of sliding it out the other way taking it out at the top. A uh, little spring will be on it there's nothing really you have to do with it just clean it with a brake cleaner. Uh, clean the inside of the tube remove your seal and washer there and clean it with a brake cleaner. You can then reinstall that little rod at this time. I'll show you in a moment what to look for when inspecting the bushes, but when reinstalling this tube back inside the outer tube, it's just simply a matter of making sure that inner rod is sticking out a little bit, pushing on the aluminum cap uh, with your new bush on the tube obviously at this stage and slide it down into the bottom gently and reinstall your bolt, making sure your copper washer is good, good in good condition. Right now guys, when inspecting your bushings, it's quite simple really. This is the bushing off the chrome fork tube, and this is the bushing inside the outer aluminium tube. 
Uh, this bushing looks like this on the outside, you might think that's bad, but that's because the tube actually runs on the inside of it. See, it's that nice little grey Teflon coating there. Uh, that's what you want to look for, a nice even coating. Uh, same with the other one which runs on the outside, should be a nice smooth coating again. Things like this little mark here is what you don't want to see. That, for all the price of bushings, you might as well install new ones on there. This one was actually one of the better ones of mine. The other one was really bad. The whole surface was a lot worse than like this bit here. But when removing these, just a matter of this one, just pry it open with a screwdriver, slide it off, slide on the new one, and job done. No real need to oil anything, but you can if you want, obviously, because it's going to be covered in oil anyway. This is the one that goes inside the outer tube. Now, when installing this, it's just a matter of it's a little bit tight, but just push it down in and try and get it started with the finger, fingers just working it around a little bit at a time and that's the one you'll see in the next session, section here I'm pushing it down with the washer and the little insulating tape trick so if you don't have the seal driver so uh, let's move on to the next bit and show you what to do next now these little bushings can be tight to get pushed right down in so once you get them started try and get them started with your fingers just a little bit uh, use, you can use your washer that goes in between the bushing and the seal, slide it down to the bottom. You can extend your shock tube out fully, get your insulating tape and move it about 2 or 3 inches back from the fully extended position from here and wrap that around continuously until you have a good thick layer built up. Right now once you've uh, built up of tape thick enough to catch the washer, Push the washer down in and basically use that as a little hammer to drive the drive the bushing in. I'm not sure if you can see that, but the little bushing is all the way home down at the bottom there. So now we'll take off this tape and get the shaft cleaned and slide on the new oil seal. Okay, so we'll give this a little wipe with some brake cleaner and a clean microfiber. Get any last little bits of dust or grease off it. Now just make sure the seal goes in the right way around. We get the light. You see these two little lips? You get it off the camera. Now we can see these two little lips here. Uh, their edge should be pointing down the ways. Basically their flat surface so that it curves down like that. The angle points down and then the sharp edge down like that so it pushes the oil down. Just keep an eye on the old one too. Generally you maybe see some other indications like there's a number of the sizes of the sealer on this top side as well but just be careful of that. Right so I'll get some oil on my finger and just lightly oil the inside of the seal. Just enough to help it go on. Maybe a little bit on the outside, it does no harm. I gently slide that on, just be careful not to twist the lip of the seal. Little lipping the seal, just have a little look at that. And slide that the whole way down. Try and get it started with your fingers. There we go. Right, now give it another rub with a cloth. I'm going to do the same procedure with the tape, only this time it'll need a lot more build up of tape. So we want to get right out to the outside of the seal here. 
Now you can use that slide hammer method for putting in the seal with the tape, but it's not particularly my favourite as if it's not, if the tape doesn't really hit the outside of the seal, it can actually push the lip that actually does the sealing and push it down in, which will damage it of course. So don't like that idea really a lot. If you can afford a slide hammer, then go for it. That's the best idea. But another little thing you do if you're really stuck is uh, get a piece of piping with a smooth bottom edge, nice clean bottom edge, uh, and slide it down over. Make sure that it's, it's a, it one's a really nice tight fit around the outside of the seal. Uh, so it doesn't do any damage to the inside. And what you can do then is take like a rubber mallet and just be very careful of this chrome surface here, but you can just tap that the whole way around until you get it down in. You can be really careful, but slide hammer is the best job, or you can use a tape method, but just be careful either way. Either way will get it done, but just as I say, just do not damage the seal, otherwise you end up having to get a whole new one, obviously. So once that's done, get your clip again. Slide it down in. And just get it started with your fingers and if you can't manage to push it right down your fingers just get your little seal driver and pop it down on. that's that just make sure it falls out into its little grooves and catches the seal fully right so now i'm going to fully extend this and get a clean microfiber and just take any little bits of dirt, dirt or dust off that. So you really don't want anything going down in there. Now grab our new dust seal. A little bit of oil once again just to help it go down in. Some of these are harder to push home than others. This is an old balls one. They tend to be quite difficult, quite firm to push in. But once again be careful when fitting it on. Lay it down in and push that home. Right. Right, so the next job is filling it with oil. Uh, make sure the tube is fully down in this time. And this particular shock takes 500 milliliters of oil. Some manufacturers will recommend a certain amount of oil or a certain level of oil to measure from this surface down in once you get it done. But I have exactly 500 milliliters of Castrol 10W fork oil I'm using in this one and here so I'm going to pour that in and let it settle down for a second. may have to wait for a moment, let some bubbles escape before you can get it all in. There's to be quite a few bubbles in there. You might be able to see those bubbles escape in there. Yeah, still bubbling away. So leave that to sit for a few moments and when we come back we'll move the shock up and down through a couple of movements to try and get some more bubbles out and we'll leave it for another little while just to make sure we're absolutely certain there's no more air left in it. So, okay so the bubbles have stopped now so we're just going to move it through a couple of full motions here now. One, two, no real magic number just as many times as you want really. 5, 10, 20, just until you're happy. Pretty much all air is gone. So basically when that's all settled down, I'm going to just measure the amount of oil in this fork. So I've already done the other one and I've put a little mark on this stick. You mightn't see it there, but there's a little black mark. And so I'm going to dip it down in and this little black, black mark should be level with the top of the shock and the tip of the thick stick should just about touch the oil level. Yeah, that's spot on, the exact same as the other one. So now we're safe to put in the spring. A 
remember just from disassembly which way around it goes generally the tighter wound coils will be at the bottom just make sure it's completely clean once again this is the next the little washer not make that mistake twice just make sure that's it's down in nicely on top of the spring there. Next the spacer tube. Now this time we'll have to fully extend the shock. And remember the little D-shape profile in this. We will put it down in nice and gently and just turn it around. There we go, this falls in place. Now we'll have to push down a bit in this to get it to start. So you can either push down that and turn the tube itself, or just if you can, just push down and turn at the same time. Just make sure you get it on the right threads because you don't want to cross thread these, they're very fine threads. Yeah, started no problem. leave that hand tie at the moment but that is pretty much it that is our shock absorber rebuilt once we get it on the bike we can adjust this little damping adjuster make sure they're both the same the same amount of screws around the right whatever is preferred but yeah that, that is one shock absorber serviced and rebuilt yeah guys so that's the shock absorber rebuilt hopefully that was some kind of help to you I would Definitely, as it says there, I would definitely recommend if you can just go out for a proper fork seal driver as I don't like the whole tape method of that but it's just showing you one way you can do it or two ways you can do it without buying the proper tool but uh, definitely recommend the proper tool for the second uh, part. The little bushing is okay but the seal just be extra careful so you don't have to do it twice. No fun on that. But that's pretty much it. Uh, if that was helpful to you and you liked the video please remember to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. I really appreciate it and that's it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.